Mm. Oh, it's too early. All right. Welcome back to Dark Corner Studios. My name is Aiden Wolf, and let's say you're recording in a tin can. Can't afford any professional treatment for your studio, but you still have to sound somewhat decent. What do you do? Acoustic treatment like this stuff? Whew, can it be expensive? Believe it or not, though, you can actually pull this off without much cost, and sometimes it can actually be as cheap as free. It's pretty cheap. This is Aiden Wolf. So to begin this, you first have to understand why bare rooms sound horrible in recordings. When you talk, your voice comes out as vibrations in the air. Those vibrations are the same ones that activate the capsule in your microphone to be reproduced as audio on your computer. But those vibrations are unwieldy and they don't leave your mouth on a straight line. They kind of go out everywhere. In fact, they're going to go out at all angles and bounce off every surface in front of you, above you, below you, and they're just going to keep bouncing around until they die out. Now, those vibrations somehow find their way back into the microphone. It becomes reverb. Now, that's short for reverberation, and it's the nasty hollow sound you can get when you're recording in an untreated room. Okay then, with that knowledge, some simple extrapolation of information and you realize you just need to stop the bloody vibrations from bouncing. You can also dig down and also realize that some of those vibrations are worse than others. And some surfaces are better at bouncing sound than others. So with that in mind, here's some of your fixes. Number one, carpet on floor. This is a really easy fix, so it's not gonna be the biggest issue in your space. Hardwood, laminate, vinyl, or even worse yet, concrete will all bounce audio. A lot of people like putting down a rug or even towels when they record. And while it can work wonders, it's just the first step. And to be honest, it's sometimes not always possible, especially if you have pets. If you will notice in my space, I don't have carpets. So take that for what you will. Number two, you want to avoid anything long and hard. Well, okay, uh, surfaces that is, you do you. This one might seem kind of obvious, but uh, sadly I do see this happening a lot. While it might be easy to set up at your dinner table or kitchen island for some voice work, that long hard surface is basically a springboard for the sound coming out of your mouth. Also having your mic stand on a table can actually create vibrations that go into your microphone as well. Better off to have it mounted to something like a boom arm of some sort and make sure that voice isn't projecting over a table. Number three. Long and hard was two. Watch your rear is three. <laughs> okay. Now this one is kind of confusing to think about, but it's the worst reflection you can get and it's coming from behind you. Now it sounds like it's out of a horror movie or something, but that rear reflection is the one that's gonna get into the microphone and come across as the loudest. This is one of the problems I have with those isolation dome things you can buy. They do nothing about the worst possible reflection. So there's a few practices you can put into action that'll help you out without having the space treated directly behind you. Generally speaking, just make sure there's stuff on the wall. I mean, one of the best things you can do is sit with a bookshelf behind you. That makes for a nice soft spot for the reverb to die or at least be reflected in another direction than straight back. Number four, and this is for all the messy freaks out there. Don't worry, I'm one of them. Clutter is your friend. If you have a storage area in your house, great. Maybe with tons of crap that you somehow convinced yourself that you had to hang on to it as long as you might need it someday. Yeah, me too. Having a room full of crap can actually provide a great audio experience as it tires out all those vibrations by giving different angles and plenty of spots to get trapped. Now, if you've been following this channel for some time, you may remember that I started out in a basement, all with concrete walls. But the basement was a catch-all for all of our crap, and I mean, there was a ton down there. The audio sounded great. Go ahead. Back up about six months in videos and check it out. It's awesome. And number five, this one should be relatively obvious, an appropriate mic. While rear reflections can be the worst, if you have a hypersensitive mic like a condenser, it can be very frustrating. 
Finding a good mic with decent off-axis rejection can really, really help. Now, that's the ability of the mic to reject sound from any other direction other than what's directly pointed at its capsule. Some mics are better than others. Normally speaking, though, dynamics like this SM7B are not very sensitive and can save you a lot of issues. Also, the latest offering from Sure, the MV7, had great off-access rejection, and you can check that out. I think it's up here. And I guess time for one bonus suggestion, which I guess that makes this number six, but learn how to use your microphone. Gain down if you're in an untreated room and get closer to your microphone. Avoid yelling! In fact, in my old studio, I had the cold air return right above my head, and if I got too loud, you would actually hear it come back all tinny. So yes, try to avoid any loud outbursts, as the stronger your voice is, the longer the reverb will continue bouncing. And all of that can happen in an environment that isn't treated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Now, if this subject does interest you and you're looking to actually treat your own space, I did do a video on how to build your own sound panels for pennies on the dollar. Now, do note that the quality isn't exactly up to par with what I'm doing now. But if you follow the directions, you may notice how good they sound in this studio. They're just fantastic. Uh, I'll put a link somewhere up here, I think. Pile drive that like button if you like this video. But if you really liked it, I mean like, 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 you know, try that other button. Makes us all feel warm and fuzzy. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video. Really, you're gonna sit and eat food right now? My cat's gonna pick now to eat. Thanks, buddy. Max, go away. Come on, get out. Get out. Go. I don't want you eating food right now, buddy. <laughs>